Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Okay, okay. So I, I think some of you are sleepy because of, so of the time. But yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay, so uh, thank you for the good introduction. So you can call me uh, Ian. So I'm from uh, the uh, WordPress group from Philippines. So uh, yeah, we also been doing this some sort of WordCamp. So uh, okay, so much for that. Let's go to the topic. So have you heard about uh, headless WordPress before? Who is here first time to hear this uh, feature of WordPress? Okay, thank you. How about for those who have heard about this? Okay, so later uh, maybe we can do some sort of a uh, sharing. So uh, I will just cover all the necessary points if you want to add more. So feel free to uh, raise your uh, suggestions. Okay, so okay, so that's my face. <laughs> okay, so let's before we start. So let's take a short uh, uh, call this a uh, look back or throwback on how really WordPress is started. So you know oh. We all know that WordPress is started as a blogging platform. So, but that's way, way long before. Then, fast forward 15 years later, WordPress is the number one CMS choice for developers and non-developers. So, any hand for WordPress? <laughs> okay. So, uh, so now uh, estimated roughly 30% of uh top 10 million websites run on WordPress. So uh, technically from being a blogging platform, WordPress has evolved really maturely that um, not really at, it can do anything, but somehow it can accommodate any uh, request or functionality you want to integrate on your website. So let's move on to the next topic. So. Hello, hello, okay. So uh, let's do the introduction for the API. So who here have uh, been using WordPress since version 4.4? .4? Okay, so are you reading in the release notes or not? Or you're just, okay, update, update, then done. <laughs> okay, so uh, the API functionality on WordPress was released on version 4.4 .4 as because they want to uh, go to a direction that it's being a fully pledged application framework. So meaning uh, it is not just a CMS or just a simple blogging platform. They want it that it can now create applications. So how would you create applications? So first thing you need is you need to have APIs that would supply the application. So WordPress introduced a REST API that enables the platform to interact with just about any sites or any web application, meaning uh, you can use WordPress as your back end and then for your front end you can use any you can freely use any framework that you want either if you want to use a JavaScript framework or just a basic HTML CSS with some integration of jQuery it's up to you so that's how uh, powerful how they envision WordPress to be with this API so how does that works so we all know that this is the basic setup of WordPress so you have the teams that would act as the front end then you have the functions and the other built-in things there to be your back end so example you want to display the post title of hello world so before interacting to database so we had a server and a php that would process the request then get it from database then displayed it on the web page that you are working so but then uh, okay next please okay next 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 <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay, so now comes the front end framework. So how does this happen? All right, next. So we have the hello world application. Okay, so let's say that the hello world is being used. You are using uh, next and uh, any of those uh, front end frameworks. So how does WordPress comes to the picture? So next. So WordPress would act as what I said, your back end. It would get all the contents the crude your, it would perform the crude operation create read update delete then uh, it would get what you feed into that then next display it to the application so uh, sounds simple right <laughs> sounds simple right or it's too complicated to process so let's put it this way that uh, 
you are now separating uh, front end the main uh, web application from WordPress. So basically, you have now two working applications. Okay, so next. So let's now get into the main topic. So there are two types of structure that you can use when uh, building a headless WordPress. So any idea? What is the two structure that you can use based on the pictures? So what you see on the first picture? What you see? <laughs> From WordPress. <laughs> so what does this costume portray? <laughs> so uh, <laughs> so this is uh, we know Halloween, so trick or treat. So this is a uh, headless. Uh, go. So the first structure is the word itself, headless WordPress. How about the next structure? <laughs> what does the girl doing to the boy? Saying goodbye. If you said goodbye, they have break up. So they call it the next structure. We call it decoupled. <laughs> <laughs> so sounds funnier, but that's how they call it because uh, before, right, as I said, uh, the front end and back end, it's coupled in the WordPress installation. But since we're separating it, so the term they use is decoupled. So I don't know why they introduced that term. <laughs> so let's get into the definition next. Okay, so for the decoupled, the back end where the content is created and the front end where the content is displayed is housed separately so technically you have two applications so the first application is wordpress which serves as your back end and the next the front end is anything that you hello hello okay so anything that you specialize up you specialize at any front end framework you are free to use as long as wordpress is your back end you have no problem integrating this the next is uh the thing of this one is you have still the benefit of content preview because you know WordPress they have this uh they got this content uh a preview where before you publish you can check the draft first then uh, see if everything goes on the how how you want the layout to be before publishing so with this you can still hello you can still uh, do that thing so but the thing is uh, you're not uh getting the power of the live preview of WordPress instead you're utilizing the preview of your any application so uh, I've used some uh, so this uh, JavaScript base frameworks for front end so once you have changes it automatically reloads so uh, still you can get the benefit of having your content viewed on how it would be displayed the next is implements a one is to one relationship so it's like a because this, uh, you have this uh, front end thing that would just serve for this specific front end stuff that you want to do. So it's not uh, like uh, you created a back end, then you can use it anywhere you want. So if you use a decoupled approach, it would follow a one is to one relationship. But comes next now, the next structure, which is uh, the headless. So headless is a totally independent back end it's not like the decopo that somehow it's dependent on the front end this one is the say called the subset of decopo so you're just isolating wordpress as your main back end then that back end would implement a one is to many relationships so example you are maintaining couple of apps but just displaying the same data it's just uh, in this app the layout is different from the other applications so if you implement this uh, structure like just a headless one, then you can just have your front end developers that okay, I get, I give you these endpoints of API, then up to you how you would lay out it. Okay, so they can create several apps up to them, up to your front end developer. So, uh, any questions so far? So, are we clear with the structure? Okay, so next is uh, we're gonna go now to the pros and cons. So, Next, the first uh, pros you can get is uh, full speed ahead. So you have a fully optimized application. Because uh, you see in WordPress, this is the first problem for beginner, the optimization. Because uh, the optimization of WordPress is really hard for beginners because uh, beginners just tend to put plug in, plug in, plug in, plug in. So it becomes the site heavy. Unlike if we use a headless approach, your website would not be dependent on any external libraries all built in in WordPress which is 
fully optimized, you can get the information very fast. Okay. The next is flexibility. So as I said, we have two depend uh, two applications, back end for WordPress, then pro, uh, uh, back end for WordPress, then the front end. It's up to you what you want. So uh, you have now the flexibility to uh, integrate it to different platforms, regardless of how of what would be the front end, as long as it can support the response, the JSON response from WordPress. You can have the flexibility to seamlessly uh, integrate it. Then if you have updates, it would not be also too uh, difficult to handle since uh, the two are acting independently. Okay, next is bulletproof. So uh, another issue, security. So we'll tackle that later. So, but technically, uh, you've been hiding your uh, backend from public access since it's a separate application. So what they just see is the front end application so the back end they don't know where you're getting the data so it would be somehow not really too hard but at least you would give your uh, penetrators some uh, challenge on finding where you are getting your data from application okay so if there are pros there would be cons so you can have all in one <laughs> so next is uh you need to be jack of all trades so why because uh, as i mentioned unlike on wordpress you're maintaining just one instance of application, but now you're maintaining two, so two different applications. So you need to know how both of those is functioning. If you would be the one who will develop and maintain it, because uh, if you don't, because I believe if you're a back-end developer and you don't know how the front-end works, it would not make sense for the APIs or applications that you're uh, doing. So because, uh, what would happen is, example, the front end guys, hey, I need this, I need this. You would just do, you would just do, you would just do. You need to understand why they need it. Because uh, the, a good uh, back-end developer, it gets all the logic. The front end just consumes everything ready. Example, I have this experience with my developers that uh, we have this, uh, we're displaying the price. So now the tendency is... Uh, we first launched the application for Singapore clients. So the, the currency is uh, Sing dollars, right? Then uh, we also have a business entity in Kuala Lumpur. And you know, the currency there is Malaysian ringgit. So now they don't put the logic of getting the currency in the back end. So they put it on front end. When we deploy, so it's reflecting Sing dollars, even we are selling an uh, item in Malaysia. So. The, that's why you need to uh, call this, uh, you need to get to know both so at least somehow the basics so you know what you need to be included on your back end on your WordPress how you would structure the response for the front end the next is as I mentioned being a jack of all trades there would be a learning curve so new technologies meaning new challenge so example that on a uh, when you want to integrate that uh, on a different uh, framework for front end so as i mentioned you also not really need to master it but at least get the concept get the idea so you know how you would build your back end the next is you would be de utilizing wordpress so uh so you're telling me i will be de utilizing wordpress so why would i still uh, go with the headless thing so the only thing that's why I mentioned you would de utilize WordPress is you would be losing the power of the WYSIWYG editor and the live preview. Okay, but if you if that is not the case on the application you're making, then even if it is a cons, you can still proceed doing this uh, structure. Okay, so having said that, so I prepared some uh, short demonstration on how you can implement a WordPress. Uh, a headless structure on your application so this is uh actually i'm not trying to do live coding i already made the final output so we just run through each component the front end and the back end then we see how it, this would be beneficial or not to your applications that you are doing okay so access okay so uh and here familiar with the hero app Hero app for Angular. So for Angular beginners, this is the uh, first tutorial that you would be making. So I created this uh, simple application that uh, would uh, list out all the. Wait, uh, 
<laughs> okay, would we'll list out a set of heroes together with the short description and their logo. So basically, the layout <coughs> is made up Angular. Where do we are getting the data? We are getting the data from here, WordPress backend. So the first thing I did, I do is I created a custom post type, which is hero. So then uh, from this post type, our application, our Angular application is receiving and displaying the data as is. So how that does happens? So let's make a quick review on the code. So, okay, so, oops. Okay, uh, wait. Okay, so I created a plugin. Why I created the plugin? So because, uh, oh, okay, so, okay, by default, this is the endpoint of WordPress. All the data on your WordPress installation is here. You just use your uh, you just use your domain then slash WP dash JSON. So but do we need this bunch of uh, data? Not right. So if you give this to your front end developer that hey you want all the data, okay, come and filter it there. So it would not really make sense for them. First rule of front end developers you just give me give me what I need. You don't give me this kind of a uh, whole bunch of things. So what we're gonna do is, so first is we created a plugin. So this plugin would hold, I created a master class with these heroes that would hold all the functions. So first function is I registered a custom post type. So if you would see, it's just like a regular custom post type, your regular custom post type code. The only difference is this one show in rest so meaning it would include this on your when you request for api in the wordpress so if you remove that then those bunch of data that you see earlier it would not include this post type okay so next one is i just created the custom taxonomy just for a presentation purpose then next is the custom endpoint so let's go back to this api okay so technically we have this, oh sorry, we need to give the, the, the front end developers the exact data they want, which is when we look at the app, the name of the superhero, the team, the logo, and the short description. So how do we do that on WordPress? So we will be creating a custom function and put it on a hook. So. First is this hook, register rest route. So meaning uh, you would be creating your own routes for this one. Since we don't want to use WordPress default because it has a bunch of data, we just need a specific portion of that. So we use that hook. Then the first parameter you put in there is the URL that you would be needing. Then next is the method which is if it's a get or post so i think i don't need to elaborate what's the difference between get and a post so for this request we are we need to fetch the data so technically the method we will be using is get and then next is why do we have a callback so the callback would give you the structure of your response so if you see get all heroes so i created a separate function here for uh that one then if you would see i make a uh, call this. I made a WP query function here to query all the post type with uh, with the publish status and the permission is readable. Okay, so this one is a self-explanatory thing. So we created the JSON uh, response here. The first response would have the parameter of title, which would and be fed with the 
get the title function, which technically gets the post title. The next thing is getting the post content. So get post field, post content. So I put it on the description uh, parameter. The next is we need to get the image. So I just use the WordPress featured image. So we can we not introduce a new custom field since it's already built in there. So I just get the URL from that. The next is the tags, which is which team this superhero came. Then this would be the sample response. Okay, let's go back to the query. Okay, so here you go. Okay, so from a bunch of very, very big data, we were able to filter out it with what we really need. So the title, the description, the thumbnail, and the tags. Then now, uh, just an anger, you just need to give this endpoint from the superhero, uh, from the this you need to give this endpoint to the front end developer so when he started to code your application so you just need to integrate this okay so you see it just just calls this function and then it maps whatever output do we want it so you see the hero so if I change Superman's name let's say Okay, let's edit. <coughs> let's say uh, X Men. Oh, what happened? <laughs> Wait, uh, I'm not running my Angular app. Sorry. <laughs> okay, let's come. Let's run our Angular app. Oh. Okay, building, building. Okay, so you see from Superman, it became X-Men. So that's how headless WordPress is uh, being implemented. Uh, you would be just utilizing your WordPress just for those back-end things like updating the basic crude operation, create, read, update, delete. Then for display, you work out a separate framework either angular or whatever thing you need so now having said that so okay let's go pursue the security so i just have here two points that you need to do this is just the basics so i think we have a separate talk for uh, security maybe you can uh Chat, uh, you can channel your questions to the one who assigned to that. So, but these are just the basic that you need to know when integrating headless WordPress. First is the course. Are you familiar with course? Cross origin uh, error. So this is happening when the request from a certain endpoint is coming from a different domain. So it's a basic security of servers that's implementing. So, but if you put this uh, certain uh, code on your uh, on your uh, application so it would allow uh, accessing of your application to whatever domain your front-end application is hosted the next is this one the, this is the most important having your API tokenized so the one I made I showed you last uh, earlier was not tokenized so if that has a post method so if they know the endpoint they might abuse it and post redundant or unusual things to your application, feeding your application with malicious information. But if you have this tokenization that before uh, processing the request, it would match the token from the source to your WordPress site, then if the token matches, that's only the time that it would process the request. If it's not matching, then it would reject the request. So to be specific, that is uh, JWT or uh, What's the meaning? I forgot. Who knows about JWT? JSON Web Talk. Yeah, that one. Yeah. Have a hand for him. He remembers. <laughs> Thanks for saving my ass. <laughs> anyway, so, uh, so those are the two key points. But that are just the basics. So you need to ensure uh, other stuffs, basic stuffs on WordPress, like hiding your WP admins, would still be 
followed. Okay, so next. So, having all that information on your hand now, should you go to headless WordPress or not? So, here are the three things you need to consider. First is the cost. So, having maintaining two applications, meaning you need to spend more. Because, uh, let's say first on the developer, if you are not good at front-end, then you need to hire a front-end developer. Then, if your server can accommodate two applications, you need to buy or create a new instance of server for your front-end application. So, those are the things that you need to consider in costing. Next would be the multi-channel publishing. So, this is the one I'm mentioning earlier that if you want to uh, publish your information or your API through multi-channels, so headless WordPress is the best approach for you. Then next would be the maintenance. So, basically, uh, if your site depends on daily maintenance performed by users unfamiliar with coding and coding basics, you may prefer to stick with the original implementation of WordPress or better hire a developer to help you set everything up and prepare or prepare your hands to get dirty. So it's up to you if you want to. Uh, this is an exciting uh, feature of WordPress. So. It's up to you if you want to explore it or not. So, but still, it would depend on the needs of your clients. So, I think that wraps up my talk. So, uh, salamat. It's thank you in English. So, remember, WordPress code code is poetry. <laughs> okay. So, thank you very much. Up or this approach of oh, so this application is uh, I mean this implementation of WordPress is more of on the back end. So for a uh, SEO thing, if you're asking about SEO thing, so yeah, when we try to do this on one of our applications, so it's a main issue with uh, I will not name the framework, the front end framework, but it if you are using a JavaScript based uh, framework, so because we all know JavaScript is a client side rendering and uh, Google can crawl or read that, so it would be a big issue with SEO. You need to dig in some technical knowledge in order to overcome or implement a successful SEO campaign if you would be, but would still depend on the front end framework that you choose. But for WordPress, let's say if you install uh, the basic uh, plugins for SEO, it would not be really essential since you would not be using WordPress as a front end. It would be merely isolated as a back end. So for SEO, it would depend on the front end application that you would be using. Any more? Wow. Your name and the question? I'm Carl. Um, what's the JWT plugin um, could we try and use if uh, we wanted to organize? Okay, so for the JWT plugin, uh, not to brag about, but I'm not letting my developer use a plugin for that one. We are using our own tokenization just to be secured because uh, it's not that I don't have trust using uh, secure, uh, security plugins out online, but uh, let's say that if you are uh, publishing any, uh, you call this any, uh, call this any sensitive contents on your application. So I might recommend that not uh, going through a usual plugin if you can create your own tokenization better. It's just an easy one. It's just you need to, uh, actually you can use WordPress salts for this one. You can extend that one. So you don't really need to, edit, to do plugin. As I mentioned, if WordPress gives you this and you're doing development, then uh, you can, uh, this, uh, you can, utilize it so at least uh, it's like a you, WordPress is giving you this so why not utilize it so but if you can suggest any other if you are using any other plugin so no issue about that as long as you find it secure then the thing is uh, you're getting uh, 
your connection with the API calls securely, no problem with that. But for me, when it comes to security, I'm so-so with using plugins, okay? Okay. Hi. Okay, I have a question. I was just about to suggest. Mm -hmm. I had no questions. I thought Ian just now said you wanted to get people to share. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Kawa. Mm -hmm. I, I have a silly question, which is not related to WordPress. Mm -hmm. uh, which tools you use for this making this uh, slide? Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> Actually, uh, I was using Prezi. You know, Prezi. Prezi. F uh, P R E Z I. So because I uh, find PowerPoint boring. Because based on my, uh, not really, uh, it depends on how the speakers approach, but uh, that's what I observe when I'm presenting. So if I'm just using Microsoft, they just tend to, okay, okay, okay. And like in Prezi, you get DC looking everywhere. Sometimes the slide goes up. <laughs> so just um, use it just to get attention of the, uh, the, the crowd. So at least they are, when you see, when things are moving, so you also, you also get the attention of the people. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Peter here, when you deployed the uh, WordPress for Headless, um, the front end of the codes that are for WordPress are still there, right? Or how do you kill that? Ah, okay, okay. So for that one, so basically, uh, because this, uh, we are not really killing the teams, we are staying it as is, but the server we're deploying it is an isolated one. So it's not available for public viewing. So if they tried to uh, view the because this is the domain, so they would be redirected to uh, the front end. We're doing the because this we're doing uh, that kind of mechanism. So you can't really take away the front end part because it's part of the WordPress installation. Mm -hmm. So essentially, you can still yeah, you can. Mm, yeah, you can so that, yeah, that would be beneficial if you would also be using multi-channel publishing. Example: you have a website and you have a mobile application. Then, uh, because I have this one client before that he has a web, uh, I'm developing his WordPress website. Then he hired the external uh, mobile app developer. So his goal is if I publish something on the website, the mobile app should do it. Then now uh, I don't know. He has a very lazy mobile app developer. He told me, ah, you create API, I just consume it. It's not that every time he updates, I also update. So I find it uh, sensible. So, but then, lazy guy, <laughs> I'm doing all the work. So, but then, uh, seriously speaking, yeah, you can retain the you can retain the front end for your website. Then, if you want to publish on applications, so that's the time you this headless setup would be uh, working because you need to update on just one instance. Then everything website, external mobile or whatever applications that needs that information to be updated would also get the information. Can you remove it? Hmm? Can you remove it? I'm not really sure on that one because I haven't tried it yet, but maybe let's uh, see. <laughs> right. Hi, uh, this is Hassan from Bangladesh. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have a question like, uh, this is mostly about API, right? Yep. So mm -hmm. uh, is there any built-in feature for uh, red lifting or throttling or anything like that? Uh, yeah, yeah. Actually, there is something like that, but it's kind of too technical. That's why I don't uh, but include do you, it. Do you use any third-party plugin, or uh, is it built-in in WordPress? It's a built-in in WordPress. Um, you uh, are you familiar with transients yeah, on WordPress? Yeah, yeah. yeah, you would utilize that functionality of WordPress because uh, the main <laughs> issue is if you're getting a big chunk of data, so the response would be uh, really uh, not really too slow, but uh, kind of not acceptable to the standards. So that comes now, this transients and caching thing that WordPress has built in. You can fully utilize that one. Okay. Mm -hmm. So a uh, developer need to uh, bootstrap these things first. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Right. Mm -hmm. Any more questions? No? <coughs> okay, it's three more minutes till you guess what time it is. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I'm yes. waiting for this. So it's tea time now. I'm ready to go. Um, come back to the next round of talks.